Hallo und herzlich willkommen auf dem 38. DocFest in München. Welcome to the 38th edition of the Munich Documentary Film Festival. I want to welcome you today from the Deutsche Theater Silbersaal, where we um, will record this talk um, about the film Skep Wender. And um, the film already had two screenings at the festival. And here it was the German premiere. It's a Brazilian production and we show the film in the panorama section and it's nominated for the audience of art, but I will talk about that later. Um, our guests today are Mariana Tome and Lucas de Barro, both are filmmakers and um, we are very happy that we have the chance to talk to them. And yeah, for the people who might not have seen the film yet, um, can you explain very shortly what it's about? Sure. Hello. Nice to meet Hello, you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Mari, go on. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, Scam Bender is a movie about this man, Jonathan Shaw, who used to be a very famous tattoo artist in New York, especially during the 90s. It kind of revolutionized what tattoo was over there uh, and what tattoo became in the world but also about his entire life, his struggles with his family, how his family, he came from a very kind of like celebrity uh, family in Los Angeles and his upbringing around all sorts of American and actually also Latin American pop culture. And your film really covers a lot. Like it's very impressive. It really goes from the beginning to the yeah, current situation and his current life right now. And um, I've seen there's also a book. He wrote a book about himself. So what was first? Was the film first or was the book first? Or did you decide to make the film because of the book? How did this whole project come to you? Yes. Uh, so the book existed as a very, very, very rough draft that had like a thousand three hundred pages that Jonathan like made us read and <laughs> Because he would and he would like test us on the book as well, but the book only reaches basically his uh, he barely arrives in Brazil in the book. So the book touches a lot of his childhood, a lot about his family and and his struggles kind of there. But it doesn't go all the way into his life. So it was a good way of uh, digging deep into his story and knowing uh, things that, that are important for, for, for you to know as a filmmaker, but not exactly the way that we wanted to tell the movie. Mm. Of course, we like grabbed snippets of the movie, especially of like the, his early childhood days and um, his kind of like uh, situation in Los Angeles and we put it in the movie, but, but, that was, but that was how it happened. But so the movie and the book are kind of like at the same time, the way that they were yeah. created, because the, the book was released in 2017, uh, which was when we were filming the documentary as well. Like it was the year where we filmed the most. So yeah, well, I think when we started working on the film, Jonathan was working on the book. So he used to send us the drafts and and uh, see what we could use to help with the, the filmmaking. And the idea of the film came way before we knew that even was there this memoir book mm. that he was writing. Like we started having the project and the idea, and during the process of making the film, said, "Oh, I'm writing this book. Like you should read it." And you know, it's going to help you with the you know, ideas and, and my history. So I don't have to tell you everything. I'm already writing everything. So don't I, so he would, he gave it to us. And, and then that's where, you know, they, they kind of went together while we were uh, making the film, he was editing the book and, you know, that sounds really yeah. interesting. Yes, it was. Yes, <laughs> it was, it was a little bit like, he would tell me some kind of like anecdote about his life and then I would say like, oh, I didn't know that. And he's like, it's in the book. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't read it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sounds like um, a fun challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and the, and it was like uh, really big and he would, it was, uh, like, he, like Mariana said, uh, 1300 pages and he yeah. would, constantly change it and send new versions and we would have to be you and know you, you have to read, read up. it again <laughs> yeah 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 
it's a, a big challenge. So, but how, yeah, how did the project land with you? So when, when was it clear that you will make this film? Okay, I, I known Jonathan uh, like online. He, he was very, uh, you know, a very online character, right? He had blogs and very, a, a very big online presence, but I know him for, since 2005. Okay. And we kept in touch, you know, regularly online. Cause I was, you know, like to write as well. I always thought he was interesting, like an interesting character, but I had no idea how big and how interesting he was. But we kept in touch. So we, around 2013 or 14, he, we met uh, in Argentina. I was doing a project there and he was there by chance as well. So we got together and we spent like 10 days in, uh, in Argentina together. And we talked a, a lot about, you know, films and ideas and all this stuff. So I asked him, look, I would like to make a, a film about him. He, he was living in Brazil at the time. And I didn't know this, the, the whole scope of his influence and his story. I just thought he was like, oh, this interesting guy who used to be, used to be a tattoo in New York, a tattoo artist in New York, and now it changed his life, lives in Brazil, is a, is a writer. So I didn't. I was thinking of doing like a, a small niche documentary about this character, you know, like he was an interesting character. And he said, "Yeah, we can do it. I, like, I, I'll go with it." And then I started digging into his life. So, oh, this is much bigger than I expected. And and then at the same time, he moved. He got a, a contract, uh, a book deal with uh, Harper's Collins to release his first book. It's called Narcisa. In the, uh, in the U.S., mm. so he moved back to L.A. for the for the for the press and you know finishing the book deals and everything. So I was out. This is out of my reach right now. So, but I knew Mariana and she was living in L.A. in in 2015. It was supposed to be it was his uh, book release. So I called her and said, "Oh, I got this idea for this film about this guy. Uh, maybe you could go there and shoot the the, the book release and." For me and see what we can do about it and she went there and shot the the, the first book release which is are, are the images that are showing the the end of the film mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. jonathan some doing some readings so she, she shot him for she doing she he did some touring about in the us with the book you, you know releasing the book in san francisco and some other cities and she you know traveled with him and then when, after she did that, she called me and said, yeah, we have a film here. We have to do something about this. It's much bigger than we thought, but yeah, <laughs> it's a film. <laughs> and then we took them from there, yeah. Okay, it sounds like a massive project because it took years. I realized that now when you started in 2017. Um, how was it funded? Uh, it was, so basically we started in 2015 when it, when Lucas called me and we started doing everything. I started doing a lot of research with Jonathan's material and that was all not funded. That was all just yeah. us and our money and like traveling around the, the like Los Angeles and San Francisco and wherever Jonathan was like doing his book readings. And I just have, I had a camera, so I just kept filming it and recording archives and stuff. And then it came to a point in 2016, I went to Cannes. And when I was going to Cannes, I told Jonathan that Iggy Pop was going to be there and Jim Jarmusch was going to be there because Jim Jarmusch was releasing Patterson and Gimme Danger in Cannes. Gimme Danger, yeah. Yeah, and, which Gimme Danger is the documentary on Iggy Pop. So I was very excited about it. And Jonathan said, look, let's get you to interview them over there. And I didn't manage to interview Jim over there because he was very busy. But I did manage to interview Iggy Pop. And that was the turning point of the movie. Because then we yeah. had an interview with someone huge on our podcast. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so after that, we cut a sizzle. Uh, like, we cut a little sizzle reel. I came back to LA. We interviewed a few other people that Jonathan knew just so we had, like, little snippets. And we got... And we... Uh, at this time, I was already talking to some people from Whiskey Films, uh, which is the company that then uh, became a part of our project. So... They were, ex when I pitched to them, they were extremely excited. They are very much into America, like Americana culture and all that. 
so yeah, pop culture in general yeah. but they are also latin so they had this like flavor that we needed uh in order to understand everything so that was basically how it happened uh first us just making it happen <laughs> and then yeah. we were able to catch the attention of of whiskey and rainbow lobster then which is the company of sebastian uh that is basically like our godfather of the movie right now. yeah there's actually <laughs> sebastian was the executive producer and he was in a, in uh whiskey at the time and then he, yeah. he went out and founded uh rainbow lobster so the two companies they founded the film and and uh Like I said, they were really, really uh, uh, helpful with the with the not only the money but all the the support that we needed and uh, total. They gave us total creative control. Always believed in the project in in us at the same time. So they like it was a, a perfect match for everything. <clears throat> How many, what do you think, like how many hours of film did you actually like film on different locations in different countries? And um, you have a lot of archive material as well. It must have been really difficult to combine everything and to select everything. Yes. Uh, we have, yes. I don't know, we shot in uh, uh, Mexico, Los Angeles, New York, Argentina, Brazil. Uh, and also, like I said, like a lot of, well, well, Switzerland, Philippines, Switzerland, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, Switzerland and uh, San Francisco. It was a lot of material. Also, the archive material was huge. Jonathan is a person that he he keeps tracks of everything he does. You know, like you saw the interviews with his parents that we used in the film, and you know, lots and lots of hours of uh, recorded material, TV stuff about him and pictures and uh, letters from when he was living in Brazil, letters to his father, to his mother, and all that kind of, you know, and a lot of, lot of uh, drawings and, and pictures of tattoos, the pictures of him and his friends. So yeah, it was a big challenge. We had uh, like two or three editors before we, we settled with the final editor, with Grace, which was, was amazing. And she, like, we had many, many different ideas of how to to edit it but when grace came along she she bridged everything that we had like oh we can use this we can use that she really knew how to to fix it you know the, yeah. the, the, the editing part yeah and i feel like the the most important part that i guess we we figured out uh after a lot of trial and error right uh i used to have the spreadsheet where we put everything that we thought was interesting of the of the project which kind of became like a, a blueprint of what the project could be uh but you start realizing that you get very attached into little anecdotes or little stories that jonathan has because he has a ton of them and they are usually They usually sh surround famous people and like really yeah. cool things that were going on in New York and these things that catch your attention. But we started noticing that we had a lot of that, a lot of little snippets, but they they were not forming a story. Mm. Like we could have 10 hours of little <laughs> anecdotes of Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. So and many, then, so many. It's yeah, crazy. and then when we when we basically when we put together the the story of the parents, which was something that we found in in the archive uh, and that begins our third act of the movie, we were like, okay, this is what this movie is about because mm. we always knew that we always knew that it was going to be about a vicious cycle of family of like returning and becoming your parents and. But but we had all this like cool stuff of Jonathan to show. So how do we like manage to work around that and to make yeah. people care as well of the character? So so that was kind of like the moment where we we're like, okay, it's fine. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like you can get easily distracted uh, because everything yeah. is probably like so interesting and you really want to tell yeah. it, but it's not what you need at this point. So you had to kill many, many darlings, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too many. <laughs> so um, how was it working with him? Because he seems like a very big personality. 
Yeah, yeah you, so... you, you wanna... <laughs> you wanna Luca, Luca's just stopped, you know. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Jonathan is someone who will open all the doors for you. So we, that was yeah, something yeah, yeah. that, especially for me, when because I started working with him when I was 22. I was in the last year of college in the U.S. So uh, it was very interesting to just have like someone be literally like, here's the key to my door. Uh, I, will ne- I will not be home all the time, but I will always leave you this huge trunk full of archives. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you go ahead and you dig in and you, and you figure it out uh, what you want to do. Uh, at, t- at the same time, Jonathan is someone who is very hard um, on, on his expectations and mm. what he wants from people. Uh, and you see that in the documentary, like that's clear from everyone that we that we interviewed that that has worked with him, especially during during Fun City, right? So at the same time that you had to, you had to balance this like huge personality that will want a lot of things from you, and this person who will he's not gonna make it hard for you to get mm-hmm. as well. So it was it, it was definitely a challenge to go around this the entire time with the movie and with something that you also have uh, to balance the knowledge, right? Like we are the filmmakers, so we are the ones that hold the knowledge of the filmmaking. So it, it was also like that in the, in the screening rooms and, and bouncing ideas with him. But overall, we managed. And I think that is the most important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think after all, like Jonathan really believed not all like in the project, in us, but most of all, he believes in art. Mm. So he believed that we're doing something that, oh, this has some artistic value. So let's do it. So he was really open for everything because some of the stuff we talk about and we show in the film, like it's really hard, you know, like it's heavy. Mm. I think if you see the film, you know what I'm talking about, but he was really like, totally open for any questions about anything that we had. And that, that was, the, I think, the most, like, if you have that, like, you can manage everything else, but uh, other than, you know, it's, it, it was not, it was not, like, like Mariana said, he, 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 he expected high things, but he also make it, made it uh, easy for us to go after mm-hmm. So I think that was the, the most, and then after all, like, in the end, he became a friend, and right now, it, it's just, like, we're really happy with the result. He's really happy with the result. Uh, the company is happy with the result. Now we're screening the film, and everybody is like, we're we're having good uh, uh, reviews, and people are liking it. So we're really happy after all. Success. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. We hope. <laughs> so um, you you took very interesting visual approaches in the filmmaking as well um, with your decision on the animation and um, the music. Did he have anything to say about the animation, for example? Because he, he used to be an illustrator before he was a tattoo artist. Yeah, the, the art was made by an amazing graphic artist here in Brazil called Ciso. He's a good friend of mine. We worked in other projects together. And I called him, like we called him in the beginning just to make the intro of the film, the, the, the introduction part, like the, the, the opening scene. And after we saw that, we'll say, oh, we have to do this for the whole film, mm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, so, and we took like lots of uh, Jonathan's drawings and his uh, uh, little notes and his uh, notebooks. And we, we gave it to Cecil and he, from that, all of the, of the, the artwork is, is based on the, that uh, Jonathan's arts and Jonathan's drawings. So in the beginning, it was uh, a little bit, uh, I remember he sent me a voice message. I, I think I still have it. Like, oh, you're drawing all, drawing all over my parents' pictures. Like, that's crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was a, like a rough, you know, in the beginning, it was just a rough. And I, go, I went, yeah, but that's, you know, that's what we want. That's the kind of, you know, we have to make it visually appealing. And we had a nice talk yeah. about that, and he understood. And uh, you know, but uh, like I said, he, it was really like he always uh, supported us in everything that we wanted to do. It. Even though, like, for, this is an example where he was yeah. like, "Oh, I'm not sure if this is gonna work," you know. But uh, after he saw it done, it's something that everybody that sees the film like, "Oh, this was this was crazy. It's like a, a new thing. Like, wasn't done 
like that before, you know. So, yeah, we, and, uh, Mariana can talk more about that, but we knew that we, we had to do something that was visually appealing because Jonathan's life is always is very visually visual, all his work and all his stuff, right? Yeah, and I feel like more, uh, moreover, we had this, we had a lot of archive, and when you're when you're sitting down and you open those trunks and you're looking at all that archive and you're going through it, it's extremely exciting. Mm. But then you yeah. take that and you put it in 2D into a screen and there's nothing around it. And there's just like floating pictures that you zoom in and you zoom out and it becomes boring. And we mm. were like, why yeah. is it boring if it's so <laughs> exciting? <laughs> we have to make it exciting again. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, it's just a, like a part. As well. Yeah, it became just like when we before we had we had only the pictures and not the, the artwork. It was just like oh, pictures. One of those documentaries, you know, like TV mm. docs with yeah. lots of pictures. Like oh, we have to do something about this. And <laughs> that's how it came along. Yeah. It worked out very well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, um, what's happening with the film now? Where is it going? Uh, right, right now, I don't know if I can tell you our next... <laughs> our next then film. don't. <laughs> so I won't tell you. So, but we yeah, we're doing screening. Like, yeah. And uh, we are still in Doc, in doc Lounge as well. We, we have a few more screenings in, around Finland and, and Sweden. Uh, Bafisi, which is the festival in Argentina that we just were in, uh, they're taking us to their itinerary uh, festival. So they mm -hmm. go around Argentina with the movies that they like the most from the festival. And they just, yesterday, they invited us to be one of the movies that they they go around. So we're very excited Congratulations. About <laughs> and we're, I'm not going to say anything, but we are coming to North America very soon. So I'm just not I didn't know that. Okay. You have to tell me <laughs> later. <laughs> Yeah, we have a screening Friday in uh, Doc Munich. We're so yes. so sad yes. that we couldn't go. Uh, we like uh, me and Mariana. We talked so much. Ah, let's go, let's go, let's go. But you know, yeah, we couldn't. But Fuck. it was yeah. you know, it's a big <laughs> festival, and and it's well, always a, a dream to show in, in in festivals the size of Doc Munich. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. unfortunately, we couldn't be there. But it's great that we had the chance to talk to you here now. Thank you very much Thank for you. that. I think it was great to talk to you. It was a lot of fun and I think it will be interesting for the audience as well. And I wish you Thank the you. best of luck and the most success you can have with the film. And um, oh. I'm, I'm sure it will work out fine. It's a, really, it's a great film. Thank so. you so Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. <laughs> it was a pleasure talking to you all. If you have any questions, we're on Instagram. It's, it's at scapvendor. Just yeah, shoot yeah. over there and we'll definitely answer and yeah. have a talk with you all. Thank you so much. So um, I'm saying bye to you and also bye to the audience. And um, please check out the film. I highly recommend um, Take the Last Chance and Watch It in the Cinema in Rio and it's nominated for the Audience Award and please vote for it. Bye.